During our filming in Iraq, all of the physicians interviewed stated the same thing, that for the first time in their lifetime, they are seeing rare cancers in children and birth defects in babies far beyond anything that they've ever experienced in Iraq's history. In fact, they've stated that 125 to 150 Iraqi babies are dying each day from what they believe is from the contamination of the air, water, and soil, and also from depleted uranium. We also found that people are afraid to have children in Iraq today because the parents are hearing of birth defects that are widely occurring in babies around the region. Children play in tanks which have been destroyed and are radioactive and they can inhale this stuff. Children play in the dirt and they inhale the radioactive material. The dust storms which occur frequently, sandstorms in that area of the world, blow the stuff up and people inhale it. My colleagues in Basra noticed an increased incidence of childhood cancer. Why children? Because they're very sensitive to radiation, 10 to 20 times more sensitive and susceptible to getting cancer from radiation than adults. The incidence of childhood cancer in Basra now has gone up 700% or seven times. We've never seen this in medicine before. Depleted uranium, it's a very dense, heavy metal and it's uh, able to penetrate uh, the most armor of any type of material used. Uh, it is a very minor amount of radioactivity, but it's not anything that, if as long as it's in its bullet form, it can be stored and it's not any type of hazardous material. Once it hits a, a vehicle and vaporizes, then it becomes uh, more of a, of a hazardous uh, material. So we decided, just as a, an experiment, to have a look at the uh, uranium filters at the atomic weapons establishment in Aldermaston in Berkshire in the United Kingdom, some 2,000 odd miles away from Iraq. And what we discovered to our amazement when we plotted this data, and when we looked at this time series from 1998 right the way through to 2004, we found there was only one big accession, only one big peak in the uranium concentration in Britain, and that was at the time of the Gulf War, Second Gulf War. So we know now also that not only uranium is extremely hazardous and it causes all these things that I've said, these cancers and leukemias and birth defects and so forth, but it also can be dispersed over very large distances, which effectively makes the use of uranium a, 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 a weapon of, well, not mass destruction, but indiscriminate effect, uh, and that makes it illegal under, the Gene under all the conventions of war, certainly the Geneva Convention. And so people all over the world are going to in, uh, inhale this dust in various concentrations depending upon the weather patterns and the weather flows. So there will be a big spike of uranium genetic damage in the world genome population, not just in the people, but in the animals, in the earthworms, in the birds, in the rats, in the deer, in every single living system that lives in zones where this uranium will have, will have gone to. And this will lead to increases in infertility, into increases in birth defects, increases in cancer, increases in a whole range of illnesses. It's a very, very serious problem. I examined 24 veterans 
from the uh, Army uh, Reserve Unit, which just returned from the Persian Gulf. Just as a matter of curiosity, I took the urine samples of those patients and sent them to uh, radiochemistry laboratory of the United States Army in the Aberdeen, Maryland. But I waited for three months for radiochemistry uh, lab to give me the result results. They never contacted me. So one day I went on the telephone and uh, spoke with the head of that laboratory and uh, he claimed he never received my samples. So I went down to uranium registry and we traced through the US mail that samples were actually sent and delivered to uh, radiochemistry lab in Aberdeen. I contacted them again. Samples were discovered on some shelf in the basement. They were analyzed, but they were all negative. So I said, fair enough, they're all negative. Uh, I will analyze them at some other place. Then hospital management came to me, including chief of staff and hospital director, suggesting that I do not do these studies because it would be futile work. And I said, I don't think so, because my professional judgment suggests that there could be radioactive contamination of soldiers who present with this strange uh, wasting disease with the symptoms that were totally nonspecific. So I took those samples of urine and sent them to the different lab an eminent laboratory in Canada at Memorial University in Newfoundland where we analyzed uh, those samples and 67% were positive. I wrote a letter to President Bill Clinton in mid-90s when I was harassed by the Veterans Administration to stop my work and in my letter to President Bill Clinton I said in one sentence I have been delegated by the government of the United States to take care of the sick veterans in my department. And disappearing samples, destroyed records, and so on, really point to nothing else than conspiracy against the veterans of the United States. President Bill Clinton received my letter, and he appointed a commission to investigate my charges. And it went to the repository of the government bureaucracy with nothing much coming out of it except for RAND reports, two huge books which made the statement that there is no risk and danger from depleted uranium. What we have seen in the Iraqi population and the adults and the children from Gulf War I into Gulf War II, the significant respiratory problems, we're seeing significant kidney problems, we're seeing significant rashes, we're seeing incredible birth, incredible birth effects. And these birth effects range the whole area from uh, malformed limbs or limbs that are missing to the same thing where you have all types of, uh, say for example, a single eye or one eye is missing or something like that. And deformities are just extensive. Again, this is something has been observed repeatedly from Gulf War I, has been observed in the Balkans, been observed in Afghanistan, and has been observed in other areas throughout the United States where uranium munitions were used and children were uh, conceived or exposed. One atom of alpha-emitting radioisotope in the vicinity of highly radiosensitive cell, like stem cell or cell of ovary or the testicle or the uh, mucosa, have capacity to damage, damage those cells. Uranium depleted or non-depleted, but depleted in particular, is dangerous in the vicinity of non-differentiated cells because it can cause the genetic changes and it can cause changes in the many generations that are following our time. If anyone asks a question, is depleted uranium dangerous? The answer is categorically yes, it is dangerous. Is, it is alpha emitter. It is used in the 30 millimeter shell, 50 millimeter shell, bunker buster bombs, cruise missiles. Depleted uranium is everywhere. It is twice as dense as lead. It goes through a tank like butter. And it is very effective, which is why it's used. Now, the problem with the second Gulf War is we're finding that they're much sicker, much faster. They're returning and they're getting the blind eye from the Pentagon a lot sooner and being ruled PTSD, medicated with psychotropic drugs, and sent out back out to the streets. And our concern 
is that the number of homicides and suicides that we're seeing in the military right now are a direct result of the neurotoxic effects from the depleted uranium. You can look at the tank. Yeah, it's a great weapon, goes right through the tank. But then you look at the pictures of the deformed babies.